In British Columbia, there is a refuge like no other. What sort of operation? I think they're crazy. <laughs> run by a family like no other. They raise orphaned bear cubs and give them a second chance. A second chance and a life in the wild. At Northern Lights Wildlife Shelter, a new bear cub has arrived. Okay, he's, he's gonna go in there. This female cub is extremely upset. Earlier today, her whole world turned upside down when her brother got caught in a trap. The cub was dying in the trap and the mother went nuts. And so somebody was worried about the people and shot both the mother and the cub, not realizing that there was another one. For the next three weeks, this little brown cub will be kept quarantined in a separate pen. Seeing her mother and sibling die, she probably will have issues with grief and stress. And it can manifest in very different ways. Some of them get really angry and very aggressive. Others just totally turn inwards. Depending on how the cub reacts, Angelica will tailor a special program to help it through its trauma. So we'll see what she's gonna be like. Right now, she just seems very, very agitated. She's looking for a way out. People here at the shelter deal with all kinds of orphaned animals. We have five squirrels at the moment. We're up at six o'clock every morning to feed these guys and they get the milk feeding every four hours through until 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. They're very time consuming, but watching them turn into happy, healthy little squirrels, it's, it makes it worth it. May have fallen asleep. No, he's done. This type of work keeps me happy, but it doesn't keep me paid, unfortunately. So the big deal for me was I had an interview for a position with the polar bear habitat in Ontario to become a polar bear keeper. My experience here has really taught me so much more than I could ever imagine and they were very impressed with what we do here. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. The next day, a new arrival. Another day, another bear. We just came back from town and the conservation officer pulled up behind me and asked me if I wanted another bear. I asked him if that was an option, but uh, he, he didn't really want me to say no. <laughs> there you are. This black male cub is behaving just the opposite of the agitated brown female that came in yesterday. He cowers in the corner. Look at those eyes. I did get the feeling that the mother was poached because there was a pelt on the back of the truck with the cup when it came. He just laid there, totally withdrawn. Angelico will have to find a way to help both new cubs overcome their grief. But with 22 cubs in care, she has another pressing concern. It's more than triple of what we had at our worst year, and probably five times as much as what we normally have. So we're going to have to do a bear shuffle and basically move what is down here up into the medium-sized enclosures and have down here empty in case there's more bears arriving. The first batch of cubs to be moved must be tranquilized for a routine checkup and tagging. The cubs receive just enough dosage for a brief sleep, so everything has to be timed perfectly. Okay, time. 3.20. Okay. 
you want to watch here, Amy, just in case he comes down hard or something like this. I'm going to draw another needle. Time is always something we take into consideration. We always record when they get their jab. We record how long it takes for them to go down. It's close, I can hear it. Amy has quickly become one of Angelica's most relied upon volunteers. Somebody like Amy is so valuable in a group like ours. You don't bug you out? She sees things, you know, she walks through and, oh, that needs to be done, that needs to be done, and it just kind of folds into what she's doing already. It's just efficiency. Are you asleep? Yep, we're out. The procedure itself isn't just all hugs and kisses. Like, it is serious. We are putting tags through their ears that we are hoping will last their entire lives. Your tech number, 7255. So, yeah, it's not the most pleasant thing, but they're knocked out. Like, you can actually almost hear them snore. They're fast asleep, so it really doesn't bother them that much. We're going to put him in a crate? Yeah, he goes in the crate over there. Well, this cub sleeps off the sedation, down in the quarantine cage, the little brown female cub, now known as Cassia, has developed a bad habit. Pacing. Some people might have seen this in the zoo. There, the pacing is more out of boredom. In this case, it was stress. When pacing happens for too long, then it becomes compulsive behavior, and it's really hard to break. If Cassia is going to be rehabbed, Angelica will have to find a way to stop her from pacing. Northern Lights Wildlife Shelter is bursting with cubs. 22 new ones so far this year. Okay, just keep the door closed. To make room, Angelica needs to move them all into one big enclosure. Sweetheart, easy. Tranquilizing is hard on the bear's system, so we try not to tranquilize unless we have to. So instead of tranquilizing, Angelica gets a bit physical. I'm going to catch these two cups with uh, the catch pole here. It goes over a front leg and over the head, kind of like this. So there's no possibility of choking them. They're going to get upset, and that's OK. We don't want them to be comfortable around us anyway, so it's a negative experience. Angelica's goal is to teach the cubs, once they're released, to stay away from people. <coughs> Using the catch pole helps reinforce their fear of humans. The key is to work gradually. So now I have the head in, but I don't have a paw in. Now I've got the head paw. Now she's caught. The bears scream like we're going to murder them, but there's no pain. OK, down. They have no understanding that this is not dangerous for them, but you're restricting their movement, and they're upset. Okay, down. Good teamwork. Yeah. And then when you let go, then it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> it's really funny. It's, it's very anticlimactic. <laughs> Finally, the cubs from all the small pens gathered around the shelter are rounded up and moved into one big enclosure. We have chosen to go for bigger enclosures rather than smaller groups and smaller enclosures simply because we feel that they exercise better. Like they run and they climb. And they startle each other. <laughs> Wipe out. <laughs> Those are all good things. One of the more recent arrivals, 
a little cinnamon cub named Scotch, is also one of the shyest. He's already looking for a way out. Because we're taking them out of the environment that they're used to and we're putting them into the new environment with other bears in there. There's going to be fear and confusion for starters. They're climbing and they're just trying to figure out where they can go and be safe. It's going to be a few days in upheaval in there, but eventually they're all going to get along and play together. So These guys will come eventually down from the tree. <laughs> they look quite funny right now. These cubs are starting to adapt to their new home. But back in quarantine, the newly arrived black male known as Time is still despondent. So the new bear is still pretty stressed out. It takes time to heal. It's the same with us humans. If we go to something really emotional, traumatizing, it takes time for us to heal too. And for wildlife, it's the same. Need some rest, buddy. Meanwhile, the feisty brown female cub, Cassia, is still pacing. Angelica wants to deal with that now, hey, you. before it's too ingrained. We were concerned that her pacing would become compulsive behavior. We were hoping to break that pattern. Though struggling hard against the catch pole like other cubs, Cassia is oddly silent. It's just like people. We all react different to stress situations. It's the same with the bears. Some get really quiet. Oh. Angelica's plan is to move Cassia to a quarantine cage right across from the big cub pen. We moved her out so that she could see the other bears. Also, there's so much more going on, and we were hoping that would distract her from the pacing. just doesn't have the trust to come down while no. we're here. No. Cassia is still wound up. She'll need to calm down before joining the others. Volunteer Amy Baxendale has just received some exciting news. In about three weeks' time, I'm actually going to be moving to Ontario to start as a polar bear keeper. When? This morning, I just got the email. Hearing that I got the job was incredibly exciting, but at the same time, I was racked with guilt because I know how much help they need here. Should they become mum before everybody else knows? Yeah, is she in house? Yeah. Yeah, go. So I'm glad you're sitting down. I got the job. Oh, good for you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. She was very happy for me, and I knew she would be. So it was, it was, it was like going to tell your mum. You know, you're so excited, and it was really nice. So happy for you. But yeah, thank you for your good reference. And... Oh, thank you. Earned it. Babe. Yeah. I'm not giving something that you don't deserve. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so we have to celebrate tonight. Sounds good to me. Okay. okay. Before Amy leaves, she'll get the opportunity to see one last release. Stinker. Of a young woodpecker they nicknamed Woody. Okay. Say bye. Thanks for really good care, guy. <laughs> Food will be left for the woodpecker until he's able to forage for himself. They call this a soft release. 
Okay, there's your food. I know that. Seriously, dude? But this release is not living up to its billing. I think this is the longest release we ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Even the owl we let go of in Alaska. It took off quicker than this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to feed the rabbits. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Bye, Woody. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> In the big black bear enclosure, the cubs are starting to get comfortable. But the two new cubs are still in isolation. Hey, baby. Cassie has been in her quarantine cage for a week. Let's see if she comes down. So how is she doing with pacing? Uh, I haven't seen it in a while. It's amazing, you know, after the trauma that she suffered, that she yeah. is just bouncing back like this. The despondent little cub, Time, has also shown improvement. Brought him up here so he had a little bit more stimulation. And um, it has done him really good. He has gained weight, he has grown. Now that Time and Cassia are on the mend emotionally, they're ready for their next stage of recovery, integration. Cassie and Time came roughly around the same time for starters. And secondly, they both had a similar traumatic experience. They, we felt that they could possibly become friends and help each other. But can these two very different cubs get along? Volunteers Kim, Thomas, and Jesse bring Time and Cassia into their own separate pen, all under the watchful eyes of the curious cubs next door. Yeah. Yeah. The two traumatized bears are about to meet. Time is shy about his big pen and nosy new neighbors. Finally out, he instinctively darts up high for refuge. Is this one out? Come on, get out. Come on. Feisty Cassia, however, Come on, bud. is refusing to leave the transport box. Sticky bear. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's leave it in here. We get it this afternoon. Let's take the other one out and we go out. The second they turn their backs, Cassia heads straight up for the highest point in the cage, too, where time has also taken refuge. When you're putting bears into a new area, they tend to tree and stick there until they feel safe. I think he has a friend. Next door at the yearling enclosure. So today is my last morning at Northern Lights. This is Amy's last chance to see the yearlings she watched grow up over the past year. It's sad, because I'm not going to see these guys again, because they're getting released. So it's like, yeah. We're both going off on new adventures, myself and the bears. It would be nice to stay. But in the end, you've got to go with your gut feeling. And my gut feeling at the moment is polar bears. So that's what I'm going to go with. And if it doesn't work, 
they'll just have to deal with me again. <laughs> Coming back seems to be a thing at Northern Lights. That's my face doing. <laughs> this is our woodpecker. <laughs> we release him, I think now it's two weeks ago. <laughs> He's just um, not going away. <laughs> The bird formerly known as Woody Come on. has been renamed. Uh, somebody suggested the name Boomerang because he just keeps coming back. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great spot. That's an awesome spot. Huh? Sometimes it's not always uh, handy, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> and Boomerang isn't the only one who's gotten comfortable with life at the shelter. And this is called the bear sloth, right? Cassia and Time, when we first brought them in here, were basically stuck up on the tree. Especially Time took his sweet time to come down. <laughs> now they have settled in really well and come down when you're feeding, so no problem. If you take two singles and you put them together, and if they had siblings before, they kind of adopt each other, and it makes them stronger, having the feeling that they have family bonds again. Most of the bears that come have a sad story, but at least we can make it better and give them a chance, a second chance at a life in the wild.